Hello everyone and welcome back to Elysium Trading Empire channel. So today's subject is about a concept that I learned from ICT, which he took uh, from a book, uh, from Larry Williams' book. And I will show you a live trade that I took uh, this Friday uh, using this concept. So how this concept helped me improve my trading. Uh, intermediate term high and intermediate term lows, they gave me more confidence in my trade management and where I place my stop loss position, um, where I take profits, etc. Uh, you, you, you would see uh, more clearly in the examples. And also, when I see a short-term high or a short-term low followed by a potential intermediate term high, intermediate term low inside a fair value gap that I want to trade, it gives me uh, confidence, more confirmation and a safe stop loss position to trade uh, when, I, when the next uh, short-term low or short-term high is formed. So, you will see this also more clearly in the example, what I mean by this. And I want to give you a warning because like every other concept that I teach or that you can see anywhere on YouTube or any mentorship in trading, uh, they work when we understand and master them. So even the retail thing, everything works, work. Uh, to a certain point, if you master uh, the concept and if uh, you you make it your own, uh, like a strategy with it and not copy someone else, uh, like by just copying a concept, you cannot be profitable, no matter how much someone is profitable with this same concept. So hope uh, it is clear for you. Uh, otherwise, yeah, with this concept, you can just see intermediate term highs and lows everywhere and you can try to trade them all and you will end up uh, very probably losing. And you will not understand why, because uh, for me it works and for you it doesn't. So this seems strange, but uh, there is a clear point to make. Uh, we, we, we can have the same knowledge, but we will not have the same results because results are not uh, entirely uh, dependent on the knowledge. Okay, so at least on explicit knowledge. Um, it, it, uh, it is more dependent on implicit knowledge. Implicit knowledge is knowledge that you get from experience, that your subconscious will uh, register and so you will see things, start seeing things uh, automatic, automatically and not uh, by thinking, you know. So like when you are driving a car, you are not thinking how to shift or uh, how to, to brake uh, or, or how to accelerate or whatever. Now, uh, for most uh, of people that uh, has his, his driving uh, license and drive for a long time, it is automatic and uh, your uh, brain can, uh, you can drive from a point A to a point B, not even thinking about anything like uh, about driving. I mean, you can be daydreaming, uh, singing, uh, whatever. You can do many things in the car and you will still arrive from the point A to the point B without thinking about how to drive your uh, automobile. So, this is the same point that you want to reach in trading where your subconscious will trade almost automatically by recognizing the patterns and the, recognizing the entries, when to exit, etc. And this comes only by practicing, practicing uh, hours and hours of uh, chart. So that's why it's very important. The, the process is not to underestimate and the time is not to underestimate uh, to master uh, this skill. So 
note that if you want the orig original explanation from ICT, you can look at his episodes 11 and 12 uh, of his free 2022 mentorship on YouTube. So today I want to show you a trade that I took uh, this Friday. And uh, I used uh, the concepts of uh, intermediate term highs, etc. So let's start with the daily, as always. Uh, the same area that I used for other example in uh, previous videos. So this is the uh, old low area, which is a premium uh, for uh, premium area for selling. And uh, with the fair value gap, of course. So here we first formed a short term high. Then this for me was a potential intermediate term high, but you cannot uh, know until um, like you form this high and then it should be there a uh, fair value gap that you want to trade uh, in order to form a short term high. And Normally, if this is an intermediate term high, the stop loss above this high should be safe. That's why you are looking to trade uh, either this or this one. I think I traded this um, this move. Uh, you will see in the hour chart, but uh, the second one I didn't catch it. But uh, that's not yeah, that's not the subject. Uh, so we took buy side liquidity uh, from weeks ago. And the target, if you remember, is this low and the same side liquidity from, uh, from 2016, I think, something like this. So this is the target and we we'll start moving now very aggressively toward uh, this target. And you see there are liquidity all along uh, this uh, range. People will see this as a bullish range and this as a break of structure. Okay, so for us, it's all liquidity. Now let's move on into the hourly chart. So this intermediate term high on the, sorry, on the daily is our long term high on the hourly chart because we took the structure. So this is a break of structure. And we formed an inducement for people to think that this is a break of structure for buy. Okay. That's why you can be looking for sell above this buy side liquidity that we took. And I remember I took a trade here until there. Uh, I don't remember if, if it was GU or EU, but yeah, the same setup happened in both. And uh, so now you can say this is the fair value gap in one hour that we are looking to trade in order to form a short term low and to trade uh, below the sell side liquidity. So here uh, you can say this is, for example, the intermediate term high in the one hour chart. And you can look for a potential short term high to trade. So maybe in this fair value gap, which we found here, or again, we came back uh, in this one. But uh, so this is not uh, Friday, huh? this is before. It's just to show you that sometimes it can be subjective. Um, why? Because look here, if it is a short term high, we should have, um, I mean, this becomes then after an intermediate term high because um, we rebalance this, uh, sorry, we rebalance this uh, fair value gap and then we break the structure. So we should not go above this one. But then you see, we have a kind of uh, bullish price action and we do not break and take uh, sell side liquidity. Therefore, this becomes liquidity after. So people will start selling uh, in this beautiful order block. 
If another block is too clean like this, it's probably a trap, like SMC trap. And therefore, here in lower time frame, it should have been uh, a break of structure. So people now will sell right there or so, boom. We take the liquidity and then we go into the sell side liquidity. And now this becomes the new intermediate term high. Okay. And so we are Friday, uh, start of the day, 8 a.m. Paris time. And when I wake up, I see that we took sell side liquidity. So my first thought is to buy, I mean, to look for buy, uh, to take some buy side liquidity and uh, to target uh, any of those two fair value gap to form a short term low. Okay. So after taking sell side liquidity, I was expecting the price to take at least this high, some sell, some uh, internal buy side liquidity and mitigate a fair value gap uh, to form a short term high and then uh, continue to the downside. So now let's try to find a buy setup. Uh, here I see buy side liquidity to uh, OBs. Uh, to uh, this one, this one, and this one is for me the most, uh, the one that uh, let's say uh, where most people would put uh, their stop loss above because this is the last one that took uh, the last low. People would trade inside this little range, putting their stop loss above. If we take this high, then they will start looking for sell right there and then right there. And then we have the fair value gap that uh, I want to sell after. However, you see at the start of the day, uh, we have two inducements. So this one created by those two uh, order blocks. And I like to have a confirmation because some people do not snipe right away. They prefer to wait a second break of structure. Okay. So here we have the second break of structure. However, what I did not like was uh, that for me, the, all this is liquidity. So I wanted to buy maybe inside uh, this uh, fair value gap in five minutes. However, we did not reach it right away and we started uh, to form, uh, we started to form a bullish order flow. And also I saw those relative equal lows. So for me, a lot of liquidity uh, is sitting below those relative equal lows. And then I was stuck in my head. I was okay. I cannot sell right there because people are induced to sell and I cannot buy because um, we did not reach this. We have the relative equal lows. We have uh, this bullish order flow that induce some people to buy right there and right there. So I decided that I would not trade inside this area. Okay, sometimes you have to let the market show you what it wants to do. You, you cannot trade every move or uh, then you rely on luck. You know, uh, if I wanted to sell right there, uh, for me, it's impossible that I sell right there. It's uh, too much liquidity above those highs sitting above. But some SMC people, they must have sold right there and made some profits until the liquidity. Uh, like uh, six months, uh, one, one year ago, I would have probably sold this one because I had the break of structure confirmation, the equal lows, etc. But today, I'm, I will never do uh, such thing. I prefer to wait. So I put two alerts, one below the equals and one above here. And my uh, alert on the bottom triggered 
sorry, wrong side. And then uh, I wanted to take a buy uh, inside there because I was uh, thinking like, okay, we took uh, sell side liquidity two times. So from there and there. So people will be induced to sell. And therefore, uh, I want to buy, to look for a buy. This is important. The difference uh, between I want to buy and I want to look for a buy. I mean, if you want to buy right away, you will take many losses. But if you look for a buy, you are looking, in fact, for a setup, some parameters, something, some inducements, uh, you know, something in uh, your strategy. So now let's go into the one minute inside this yellow box. Okay, so this is uh, the price action inside the yellow box. So we took the equal lows on the left. Here we go. And we have formed a fair value gap, which is for me normally um, shift of market structure entry criteria. However, I did not really like this week. I prefer when we close below uh, with like a nice body and then we go, we do the shift of market structure. But as we, we have made a fair value gap and we have taken a short term low, what I thought was a short term low, I entered without thinking. I was, even if I didn't like the thing, it, it uh, checked all my parameters. So I enter the trade. Then I see this, I, I'm okay. Many times I have some drawdowns and then it can go up. It doesn't matter the drawdown. But then I thought, okay, those are only small candles. And this week, I don't like this week. And for me, this is only the one minute chart. So. Looking like, like this at those small candles, for me, it's noise more than being a real move. And so, okay, I, I thought this is a real short-term low. This is, no short, this is not a short-term low. This is also a trap for people to buy. So when we came back around break-even, I took a break-even and I closed the, the position. And then, boom. I, it would have uh, hit my stop loss, but fortunately they gave me a chance to, to come back at break even. So uh, I tried a buy, uh, buy setup. It didn't work to break even. Then I waited an another buy side setup. But looking at the price action, so we are still in one minute, Remember here, I tried to buy, okay? And I knew this is not a break of structure. I knew uh, looking at the range, like for me, this was the high of the range. And this was only like a, a W, you know, the W uh, thing. So for me, this is a fake BOS inducing people to buy. Then, we have also a second BOS inducing even more people to buy and with three unmitigated areas. So when I saw this, I immediately uh, looked into a higher time frame and I saw this 15 minute fair value gap, which we formed and which we tested uh, with uh, this last, with this second BOS. And so I, I was thinking, okay, let's say this is a short term high and this could be an intermediate term high. Um, and also I was looking at the one hour. So, you know, normally you do a top down ana analysis, which I did. And then I zoomed out to see why would I sell here uh, i mean because i was first targeting this buy side liquidity uh, just to to make you aware of this 
Yeah. So you remember the purple area for me it became buy side liquidity once we broke those equals. So in one hour, I also saw a free uh, one hour areas that people will look for buy. And for me, this one was a very, very important uh, sell side liquidity because it was this low that broke the buy side liquidity on daily on the daily chart so many many people will want to buy here here but most most will buy there stop loss below and we have equilibrium so equilibrium is just a fibonacci placed into the daily range so i forgot to explain it on the first chart so yeah from low to high this is the equilibrium so the 50 percent therefore it is better to sell above this area and uh, and to buy below but as we are targeting sell side liquidity um, i'm focusing more on the sell setup that doesn't mean that you cannot buy right there I had uh, many setups for buy, uh, I think inside there or, or whatever, but just keep in mind always the long-term view and your long-term objective, which is this sell-side liquidity. And when there is big volatility, you know where it is heading to. It is heading to this sell-side liquidity. You see these big candles? Okay, so let's go back to our chart. Okay, so we have two inducements. We have many unmitigated order blocks in one minute. We have all the set side liquidity to take. And so here we go again in the one minute. So I told you this could be a short term high and this probably an intermediate term high. What would make this an intermediate term high despite the fact that it is just uh, above the short term? So uh, if this is an intermediate term high, I want to see a fair value gap forming and breaking a short term low. So this is our short term low, why? because this sell, this uh, sell to buy is the one that took this high, okay? So this was the low that took uh, the, the swing high here. And so, uh, yeah, I want to see a fair value gap breaking this short term low, and then we can enter on the fair value gap, which should form the next short term low. So, yeah, in daily bottom sell side uh, liquidity is, is the target. In one hour, we are in sell side liquidity area and above equilibrium. In 15 minutes, we are mitigating this fair value gap that created displacement. Displacement, it can be like a break of structure if you, if you prefer. And in lower time frame, we can see that today's market is unidirectional. Uh, if you have seen my uh, daily bias video, uh, there is two types of day like uh, unidirectional. You can trade mostly in one direction only, or some days you can be profitable trading both directions. Here, for me, it was only a sell uh, day. So, and the market is just trying to get more buyers in. So either the ones who are bullish, you know, on the daily, on the one hour, seeking they are in a bullish uh, range, or uh, the other people who want to sell higher, like I wanted to sell. And so I was looking at first for a buy. At the, the start of the day, I was looking for a buy to sell higher. And... Uh, like I used to trade before, I would have forced every buy setup 
uh, that I could see on uh, during this day. So I would try to buy, 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 buy. And even if I took one BE, two break even, three break even, I would end up losing and losing and losing until I understand that this day it was only selling. But now when I see uh, that my direction is not working, I ask myself some questions. I wait, I stay patient, I stay on the side to see uh, if it is really the right direction and if the market delivers opportunity in the other direction, like it did on Friday. But to be honest, it was not an easy day at all. I mean, look, look just at this break of structure, this uh, fake break of structure. It's so small that you could even uh, ask yourself, it is really like a break of structure, you know? Uh, it is uh, like an intermediate term high, or you could ask yourself many questions and it was really, it was not an easy day, very difficult to see. This setup was not easy to see. And here uh, we have broken this short-term high, so shift in market structure. I took a first trade on one minute in this fair value gap because I wanted to be sure to be in the trade and not miss the setup. Uh, and it's like uh, 6.3 pips stop loss. Uh, but yeah, ideally I would have loved to sell in this area even in one minute because this buy uh, did not create a new high and instead it turned to be a new low. You remember the shift of market structure with the candle uh, that creates and takes liquidity or the candle that is supposed to make a new high but makes a new low instead. So this is the one. And here you have a fair value gap, but in two minutes, you also have a fair value gap uh, at the area of the candle, a green candle in one minute. So here is a two minute chart. I took a second entry after this week has formed. And uh, so yeah, uh, this was four pips stop loss only. <laughs> And then it just moved right away. So this is the 15 minute chart. It just moved right away. We took this low, then it started uh, ranging a little bit. So I took some partials, you know, uh, just under th those lows, just to make sure to bank some money. And it came back down, down, and I uh, closed my trade right there because uh, I went out, I had to go uh, and to leave the chart so I could not monitor my trade. And I knew that there were news coming uh, in one hour. So at uh, 2.30 USD CPI monthly. And I knew there is a lot of volatility, like you can see. Yeah, I was sure that this trade would hit the sell side liquidity, but what I was not sure about is maybe with the new spike, it could maybe take me to break even or whatever. And I did not want to risk and I did not want also to spend all my day looking at the phone. Uh, so yeah, I had to go out. I wanted to be peaceful. My percent of the day was made. I closed the trade and uh, goodbye. So just for transparency matters as always so this was my second entry my first entry was there on the fair value gap in one minute stop loss above i took uh, my percent here and uh, here i took a few profits uh, around these lows on the second position and uh, yeah the second position was on the two minute m2 uh, stop loss above. So yeah, for psychological purpose. Uh, today I could have made more than 3%. Uh, 
a lot more than I think maybe four or five percent. But yeah, I think my TP area was uh, 3.5, maybe percent, something like this, whatever. By letting the trade run to my TP, but I decided to stop at a little bit more than 1%. So 500 euro, something like this. Is it frustrating to know uh, that the price went into your TP right away at the news and you just bank uh, 1%? Of course, it triggers some negative feelings, of course. But yeah, because I knew it would it was going to crash. I even say to my best friend, yeah, it's going to crash now. I know it's only one direction and the trade I took was very, very difficult to, to see and to catch. So generally, I don't give much opportunity after that. And uh, so, yeah, my goal, as I already told, is to stay consistent. And uh, so 1% a day, which means 5% a week, 20% a month, which, which is my ideal goal, monthly goal for this year. If I can make 20% a month for multiple months, I'm very, very happy. And so uh, does it mean that I have to cut every trade at 1% and not let them run? Of course not. Of course, if uh, the price the price is now crashing and uh, making many percent, I will just monitor, you know, and try to take the most out of it. But the thing is, yeah, sometimes I target more than one percent because, for example, the the setup um, we did not take the liquidity that I wanted to take. But here, in my case, we already took some liquidity. And so the price could rever not reverse, but it could come back around break even. And I did not, not want to go, uh, I mean, to stay uh, half a day on the charts and go with uh, zero just because I knew it would go uh, to my TP. But yeah, today I was supposed to stop trading before the afternoon because we were going out with my lady. Therefore, when we left the house, I just look at my phone and the trade was running more than 1%. The news were coming out in less than an hour. I was going to drive, so I could not monitor. And I decided to cut, take my percent and enjoy my weekend. So here we talk about balance and like I wrote in my book, uh, Trading with Confidence, for me, balance is key for trading success. I think it is the thing that helped me the most uh, to improve my trading because I used to be all day long on charts, all day long, all day long. And I saw that sometimes I do my analysis, then I put alerts, and I do something else, I go outside, whatever. And when my alerts trigger, I see things more clearly. I'm less stressed. I'm, I'm less bored, less uh, induced to go on over trading or uh, fear of missing out the trade or whatever. So yeah, when I stay all day on my computer, after some hours, I don't see clearly anymore and I'm getting impatient and I overtrade. So also it's very important to know yourself. If you are impatient by nature and uh, if you overtrade, uh, it's better to go outside, do whatever you want to do, uh, go work out or go for a walk or I don't know, sing, uh, dance, uh, do whatever what you, what, whatever you want. And usually when you come back, you, you, have, um, you see things more clearly. Like you have fresh air in your mind. It's, uh, it's more clear. And yeah, the setups appear to me effortlessly when I come back after taking a break from the computer.
So maybe it's me, but I think it can be helpful uh, for many people to do this. Try it out and see if it works for you. Like you can try for a week to do your analysis, put your alerts, go out. Um, when your alerts trigger, you can come back to the computer or uh, just look uh, on your phone, uh, your entry criteria, and then you know what to do. Conclusion. Just before conclusion, I want to show you something also, how you could have taken multiple position all along. So this is just the 15 minute time frame, but just to show you what is an intermediate term high, here, for example, you have a big fair value gap created by the news, which created displacement, and you could look to enter, uh, for example, at this low, inside this fair value gap, stop loss above. Why stop loss above? Because um, this should be an intermediate term high and this should be an intermediate term high, I think, because in lower time frame, I think we balance some, uh, sorry, some fair value gap. Then we should not come back here. Then here you can trade stop loss above. Once we break, you can put your stop loss at break even because the price should not come back at this intermediate term high. Here, you could also sell inside this fair value gap, which created displacement. But of course, the stop loss is too big. So it's not, uh, and after taking sell side liquidity, it's not worth uh, to look for sell uh, right there, to be honest. But here, uh, sorry, here, as we did not take yet the last sell side liquidity uh, for the day, I think, um, it could be worse to look for a trade right there or even zoom in in lower time frame and see if you can have another fair value gap in one minute, maybe, to have um, stop loss, uh, tighter stop loss. But yeah whatever uh, you can the goal is not the thing with smc is you want so much to have like big rr and big trades right away and this is a big mistake that i made and made for one year long i was looking just for big trades big rr etc and uh, yeah it does not work like this. I mean, most of the time you will get back to break even or you get frustrated because you will miss the trade because you want to optimize your risk reward, etc. Now I'm content with 1% a day and uh, more, of course, if, I, if I, have, I can have more. And I'm risking between 0 0.25 to even sometimes even less than 0 0.25. But when I uh, execute a trade at market sometimes I do not have time to measure the position so I do a regular lot size like two lots and sometimes uh, I risk uh, 50 euro uh, to make RR10 uh, 500 so it's still R 10 yeah it would have been better to risk uh, 0 0.5 percent and or one percent you know but consistency is key and uh, if you look at this entry that I made until this, I think it's like R15 or 17 or something like this. And uh, yeah, the it's better. I mean, I'm sure you would be happy taking this trade, stop loss above and uh, taking your profits here, even if it's one to two or one to 1.5, whatever. You know, this is a safe trade. Uh, and like a 90% chance or even more, uh, you know, it's free profits. So when you trade in the right direction, it's easy. So conclusion, 
Today we have talked about how I use the concept of short term high and intermediate term high into my trading. So mostly enter on the short term high after the intermediate term high is formed and forming a fair value gap. Uh, we have talked about how I safely put my stop loss when I know that we have an intermediate term high. So an intermediate term high proposed is to rebalance and then uh, we break the we create displacement, break the structure, and then it come it becomes a safe place for stop losses until um, until the algorithm wants to reverse and take back uh, take uh, some buy side uh, liquidity. So we talked about how to adapt the daily bias. I know this is a question that is often asked, uh, the daily bias, how to determine it. So sometimes you are in the wrong direction, but it's not too late to enter a trade, the right trade, I mean. So I was, I was uh, being a buyer at the start of uh, Friday, and then I ended up being a seller. So it's very important to adapt. And this just by looking at what the market was showing. So two inducements, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Also, yeah, do not be stuck in the lower time frame just because uh, you made your top-down analysis. Sometimes it's good to reverse and come back to higher time frame to see what you may have missed. So also, we talked how to differentiate noise from real moves. So just to come back to it, the noise for me was in the one minute that I took break even. Uh, this one, yeah. This one for me was noise because it doesn't create displacement. Uh, it's just small candles. And in even if you put like in two or three minutes, this looks like uh, just one, uh, one way, you know, one move. Here it appears like uh, many moves and many structures, but it's not. Okay. And we talked about the zone where you don't want to trade. You remember uh, the first zone where we where but sellers were induced, but there were liquidity, there was liquidity at the bottom side, so sell side liquidity. So no trade in this range, wait for, uh, wait to see what the market is heading to, what it intends to do. And uh, also, lastly, we talked about how balance is important in your trading success. Very important. And if you struggle, if you feel lost, like with uh, psychology, with risk management, with money management, uh, if you see that you have some bad behavioral patterns, if you don't have a written strategy, like if you feel stuck in all this, I recommend you to take a look at uh, my book, uh, Trading with Confidence, which you can find on Amazon. You type uh, Trading with Confidence, uh, Larry James, and you should find it on Amazon. I read, I read it once every month almost, uh, just to make sure that I'm still uh, on good track with the habits of uh, the successful trader. Uh, so I, yeah, I really recommend it. And, uh, I've made a first book in 2019 about the knowledge about trading, but I removed it from Amazon because for me at the moment, it does not reflect all the knowledge I got until now. So it needs an update for the first book, but the second book trading with confidence for me I think it is a timeless book because really it's uh, some very important habits to develop in order for every trader, no matter if you trade SMC, retail, 
uh, it's yeah the good psychology the good habits uh, for the trader to become a successful trader so yeah trading is not just a good technique and a good psychology it's much more than that it really goes into the habits you have before uh, during and after uh, your trading uh, sessions so it's not about only being uh, a disciplined trader or whatever it's what you do after your trading day before your trading day etc so that's it for today's video thanks for watching and do not hesitate to ask questions or to leave a comment in the commentary section I will try to answer everyone and to make a video if I can and if I have the time to answer your questions. And uh, yeah, do not also hesitate to visit uh, my website. There are some very useful articles on mindset, on many things. And uh, on Instagram, I try to post sometimes some setups but to be honest, I prefer to do a video about uh, the setup rather than just posting some charts. It's, uh, it's hard to explain uh, your point of view. Uh, even in the video, it's hard for all people to grasp my view. So if I try to explain it only on a chart with some... Uh, some indications and some words it's uh, I think not many people will uh, understand so thanks for watching and uh, see you next time